But while INEX extension of PVC collection deadline comes as cherry piece of news, issues are being raised about its recently released voter register, voting system and equipment, particularly the bimodal voter accreditation system, BVAS technology with calls that INEC should as a matter of transparency be willing to subject his voter register and the beavers to a multi-stakeholder audit and integrity test. The issue of INEC voter register and integrity of its beavers technology shall be our focus today on the program. But of course the 2023 general elections in Nigeria will be quite distinctive in Nigeria's political history following a massive introduction of technology. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, will for the first time in a general election depend on the use of electronic devices, the bimodal voter accreditation system for accreditation of voters at polling units. On, electro on election day, INEC has previously tested it in some by elections and state governorship elections. The Electoral Commission will also rely on similar technology to transmit election results from the polling units. And says the way it said it was able to without millions of fake and double registration from its recently released voter register is uh, uh, raising a bit of questions despite assurances by INEC about its uh, voter register and Beaver's technology. There are clamor calling on the electoral body to subject these items uh, to multi-stakeholder audit and integrity test. While joining us in the studio is the National Convener Diaspora for Good Governance, Chris, Chima Christian. Chima Christian, you're welcome to the program. Thank you so and very much. May I quickly correct that I'm not a National Convener, I'm just a member of the DGG. Apologies for that. Oh, we're well, one of the conveners. Uh, no, <laughs> one of the members. Rather. All right, yes. thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chris Chima. Great to have you in the studio. We also have uh, Paul James, the program manager, election Yaga Africa. Uh, you're welcome, Paul. Thank you for the invitation. All right, so uh, let me start uh, with uh, uh, Chima. Yes. Uh, if, a few days ago, INEC uh, unveiled its, um, well, what we say, the latest uh, voter register, and of course, for Nigerians, at, uh, about uh, 93.469 uh, million voters would be taking part in the general elections but uh, again people are beginning to raise uh, some uh, questions and people are beginning to make common suggestions what's your take on that well we called a press conference the diaspora for good governance because we've subjected all these systems to review with the limited uh, interaction we've had with the systems right for instance let's go back to the cvr exercise uh, the last iteration of the CVR exercise started from June 2021 and stopped July 2022. And out of that, INEC onboarded total registrations, completed registrations is 2.2 million. And out of that, INEC invalidated the registrations of 1.78 million, 2.78 million Nigerians. And then INEC says it relied on the, what it called uh, the ABIS system automatic biome automated biometric identification system to invalidate the votes of those 1.78 million using three criteria. One, double or multiple registrations. Two, what INEC calls fake or outrightly fake registrations that couldn't meet INEC business rules. And the third is visibly on the aged voters. And then we saw that um, in those things, what we saw was that uh, perhaps these systems may not be working as advertised because the only things Nigeria know about these systems uh, is what INEC puts out because these systems have not been subjected to test. And a quick example of one of the function, you know, one of the things we find that is not working well with ABIS is that if this system that you are advertising, that it's the ABIS, that it automatically weeds out unqualified voters, if that system has processed all these registration requests, then why are we seeing underage voters in the register? For instance, if this system is working as advertised, why are we seeing fake registrants in the system? You saw a lot of people who passport photographs, fictitious names, and all of those things. So that suggests to you, or in fact, that proves to you that the system is not working as advertised. That is number one. 
But when you go back deeper than that, you begin to ask yourself questions. Of the 2.78 million Nigerians that were invalidated by INEC, according to their data, you see that 49.3% of those were coming from just two regions, the Southeast and the South. South. Other regions had an average of 17% rejection. But this is that these two regions had an average rejection rate of 35%. That's twice the national average. And that was an anomaly for us. Because we're saying, okay, when we looked deeper, and we found that there is no region in Nigeria where you wouldn't find fake and underage voters from coming from onboarding in the system. But what we saw is that there are regions where there is a high preponderance of those. Interestingly and curiously, those regions with the highest preponderance of and non-edit voters had the least number of invalidations than the regions with the lowest preponderance of these things, high, high level of invalidations, uh, you know. And that is what we are looking at the data. And we asked INEC, could you please provide justifications for this? As of today, there is no justification and there is no satisfactory answer for these questions. And that was why we said, look, if these systems can be made to function like this, and we have seen the outcome in the displayed voter register, then can we subject these systems actually to independent audit and integrity tests so that we can ascertain all the stakeholders, the media, the political parties and their campaign councils and their representatives, members of the civil society, members of the media, members of the, indeed our development partners can subject the system to critical review and for us to see the way it functions. And one more thing before I yield the mic back to you is this. On the Beavers, Beavers was first deployed in South, the DGG monitored that election. Beavers was also deployed in Anambra 2021, and Beavers was deployed in Oshun and Ekiti off-season elections. As of today, there is no data to back up or to say this is the success or the fail rate of the Beavers. And I'll give you this instance. Remember previously, when the, the other device that was used, if it fails to authenticate you, and then you are able to prove that this is your PVC, you can be given an incident form. With the current electoral regime, if the beavers fails to authenticate you, remember that there are two series of authentication. Either you authenticate with your fingerprint or you do your facials. But if you do your facials and your fingerprint with your issued PVC, because we have had history, because people keep talking about they show up on the election morning and then their INEC issued beavers was unable to authenticate their INEC issued PVCs, right? And we're saying, what is the data? If 100 people showed up on the election morning, the only thing the beavers captures is the number of successful accreditations. Beavers does not account for the rejected accreditations. And we're now saying, can there be a slight software update so that at the end of the day, Nigerians can know that out of all the 10 million or 15 million or whatever million number of people that presented themselves for elections, Beavers was able to accredit, say, 80% of them, 90% of them. And that is when INEC can tell Nigerians with data that I was, there was a 70%, 80%, or 90% fail rate of the beavers. And because of the anomalies we saw in this um, abyss, which two regions I've mentioned to you presented a spike, we're also looking at, we don't want to see that there is a region that disobeys from the national average because that in, indeed would it mean that something had gone wrong. Or a region that's uh, marginalized sort of or uh, what do disenfranchised. Yes, that is what the data yes. suggests. All right, uh, let, let, let's go to Yaga, uh, Africa. Let's go to Paul. Paul, what are your own observations with the register? Regarding what now the beavers or the civil the voters register, he has just talked about the abyss and the fact that uh, the the machine may not be as uh, good as it is advertised to be, since it couldn't uh, without uh, you know the, the double registration, uh, f fake uh, registration. registration, and underaged uh, voters. He, he made quite a, a lot of. Uh, I think uh, uh, has uh, given he raised us, a lot of points. I think Anek before now have given us a foretaste of what to expect, especially with the the numbers they had reeled out about uh, the voters, the unsuccessful voters that were removed from the register. This is even beginning from uh, I think early last year when uh, the first analysis was done by the commission and they released the data and then the second one also that happened uh, just before the register was released. I get the concerns especially regarding the, uh, the validation that happened and also the figures from the north and from the south. Uh, we should not also forget that at some point INEC provided an opportunity for Nigerians to come and scrutinize the voter register, the display of the uh, 
temporary voter register that happened. Perhaps the concern or the question should be uh, how effective was, was that process of uh, the voter register audit at that point. Um, not also forgetting that in the history of Nigeria, I think since the last 10, 11 years since we started this regime of uh, capturing voter biometrics, I'm not sure we have successfully conducted any um, voter register audit, a national voter register audit, especially by INEC. So some of these figures that we have, the 93 million, could of course uh, include even persons that have disease and are no longer even, uh, they may not be able to participate in the process. But beyond that also is the point that um, when this I want to limit the conversation for me to the public display of register. I thought the process was not as effective as it should be because at that point, three things happened. There was a display, there was the claims, and then also the opportunity for people to come make correction or objections. But what you find that it started at the INEC office, just like the uh, collection of PVC that is happening, and from there it all devolved to the wards. But what you find that, that in very many any words that uh, we deployed observers to go and observe the process, there were no officials to help people through that exercise. Perhaps the concern about the underage registration that we are seeing now could have been something that people could bring to the attention of INEC. Most of these concerns were actually based on the online register that people saw and not necessarily on the, on the physical register that people saw. But also not forgetting that this underage might not necessarily be also from this recent registration. They are the ones from the 2011 and also from the 2015. And that's why I said the big question should be when will I actually audit the register of voters? Because everybody will tell, I mean, anybody that works in the space will tell you, give me a perfect uh, register of voters and I will give you a good election. So uh, for me, I think... But would, what, what, was there not a revalidation of this register? Before I'm talking about even the substance that is contained in the register itself. Revalidation of the register perhaps is just for people to come and update their records. But beyond updating the records, we still have some old records that are on the register of voters. That I, like I said, I truly don't believe that some of these underage registration were done in recent time because I thought Nigerians became more vigilant, especially uh, in this regime of, uh, I mean, preparatory to the elections of 2023, recall that this process started online before the physical capture at the INEC offices. So I truly wouldn't want to believe that um, there were much of this on the edge registration now. We deployed observers also to observe no, the no, CBM. But he raised a, a very, very, I'm, I'm coming to you. He raised a very, very key point. He talked about... Uh, the south south and the southeast having as like high as 35 percent whereas the places that have a high prevalence of underage voters had uh, as little as uh, 17 percent i was Aha. building i was coming on that because the point to make also here is recall this process of voter registration was in phases that was the online pre-registration that happened for about a month before the physical capture. The online started from June 28th, and then the physical capture started in July. So when the physical capture started, we should not also forget purveyors of fake news. There was a time that some people were propelling the news that uh, registrations were invalid from 10 years ago. People should go and register. And then, I mean, if you talk about internet penetration, are uh, people that use the internet more, you come to realize that the people of the South do that more than the people in the North. I'm not speaking for INEC. I'm not making any excuses for INEC. But the sense I get from all of this is that the fake news that went out about the need to register could have pushed a lot of people to go and do that. And you also have instances where people could just have a few corrections to make to their uh, details. They will start this process because we also supported the process. Individuals supported the pre-online registration. Some persons will start from pre-online registration instead of going to inform the INEC officials that all they needed to do was to uh, correct some of their details. They will go and register all over again. So that's also where at some point even INEC blame is official because I thought INEC owed voters a duty to inform voters about how to engage the process properly. In some places, INEC officials actually aided the multiple registration. And not knowing that INEC was going to weed out this, 
and then delete both registration. What I thought INEC would have done was, of course, to keep the two registration and then provide the opportunity for the voter to really pick uh, to uh, choose among the alternative which of the record the voter will want INEC to keep for them. But I think to go ahead and delete all registration <coughs> for me, it is uh, taking it to the extreme. All right, let, let's come back to uh, uh, Chima yes. now. It says that uh, the underage uh, voters may not be from this current uh, registration, it may be from as far as uh, 10 years ago, you say. And then, of course, I uh, also talked about purveyors of fake news, probably mm -hmm. behind uh, some of uh, your assumptions. Well, the thing is not an assumption, it is data. This is stone cold data. And remember that uh, in this data that INEC released that we analyzed, we're not talking about people who started and didn't complete. INEC was clear on those. Those were not part of the numbers I mentioned. We are talking about successfully completed registrations. And I get some of the things he's saying, but the, it doesn't explain the spike. It doesn't, because if you look at mixed survey, for instance, right, of the 2021, you find that the region with the highest literacy level, unfortunately, cannot engage INEC systems well. That is what the data is suggesting. And then the region with the lowest literacy level, especially adult literacy level, find better ways of engaging the system. So, but, but all of these things are there. It is left for INEC to say, come and explain the data. The silence in itself is just what is the, the, the attitude of the Nigerian states and Nigerian authorities. People are questioning your data. Come and explain this is what happened. And sometimes it might be satisfactory. Other times it might not be. No, but, but, but have you asked INEC directly? We have as asked a body. questions. We have asked questions, and there are records of questions that we are asked, and no um, answer was provided. If you say that these, and I'm not saying that that is what happened, these registrations were from 10, 15, maybe how many years ago? The question is with a compromised voter register, can you conduct a sufficiently free, fair, and credible elections? As of today, INEC said yesterday or two days ago that it removed 53,000 plus voters from the register. The 53,000 we are 53,000 that we are successfully reported by Nigerians. But given the limited window of reporting, right, it was not everything on the register. A register of 93 point something million, and you're only taking out 53,000. And we have taken a quick scan of even the current voter register, and we have seen that there are a lot of it on the. I show you this picture, for instance. As at this morning. This same picture you see is an underage voter. You can confirm that yourself. And then look at the authentication of this voter. So these are the part of the people who will decide Nigeria's future. What does this young person know? Does he know what is a soft? Or does he know what the election is? Does he understand what is at stake? And if you have these people deciding for all of us, then there's a problem. Because in a democracy, the ignorance of one voter can impair the, even the or, or a, a collective uh, good of the society. And that is why you limit the suffrage to at least 18, when the person can at least have critical reasoning, critical thinking. But if you have underage voters who might possibly determine who becomes Nigeria's next president, then the question is, can we subject these systems? Even if we cannot, because I understand as of today, INEC has printed and disbursed these PVCs. Some of them are the local uh, state offices, some of them are the local government offices, some of them are at the board level. So, so you're saying are saying that some of them may be in the hands of underage voters? This, right? this one I showed you is already in the hands. This is a PVC that was issued. Now what we're saying is this, if the system is working well, the abyss, if you run this data through an intelligent, automatic, artificial intelligence software, you should be able to use all the features and even the print, fingerprint to tell you that this person cannot be up to this age and can we run the data again through INEX own system and then the people we find that are underage voters despite the fact that they might have collected the PVC but we can from the back server and the back room delete their records so that even if you present that PVC the beavers will not be able to authenticate it on the election money these are some of the quick wins we can do and then about the beavers it's a slight software update so that at the end of the day, because we are seeing an anomaly and we are calling about the anomaly, right? Because there was data. If there is no data, you cannot measure it. So we're saying, INEC is telling us that PVC is a, Beavers is a wonderful device. And I agree with them that Beavers is quite an improvement on the previous devices. But there is a slight software update that we can do that can technically and with data give Nigerians the assurance that regardless of the outcome of the elections, that the data suggests that it was fairly consistent across all the regions but if not and then you see another anomaly then 
there will be a serious credibility overhang on the elections. Pa Paul, uh, we all know that uh, with a compromised uh, register, uh, it, it's really a bit difficult to say that elections will be truly fair. So what would be your own uh, suggestions in this uh, instance, you know, to ensure that, yes, the elections are really credible uh, 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 and, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, fair? I think uh, one is to increase vigilance, especially on the applic uh, applicability of the electoral laws. The laws are the law, the current electoral act is clear about the enablers of this underage. But, but, but what about the register, which is the key thing? Because you're talking about vigilance, like during the elections. That's what He's I'm talking saying. talking of so before the elections, what INEC can do, like calling on INEC for proper audit of visa uh, uh, technology, mm -hmm. uh, these newly introduced uh, equipment, you know, and you know what can i do at this point in time so, well that's what i'm saying we are already on the road to 2023 i wouldn't want to see anything that could derail that movement certainly yeah with all of these uh, trouble or uh, issues concerns that we have seen from the register that is why i said the enforcement of law should become a priority the law the electoral act is very clear about enablers of underage voting and then if these underage voters present themselves on election day to participate in the process both the uh, elect uh, the underage voter and the parents the father or mother or whoever is enabling that young person to go and uh, uh, get involved in the process will be prosecuted so it's for us as stakeholders in this space especially observers to be vigilant and, and bring the attention of uh, the uh, authorities, especially the security, to this kind of concerns. But on the part of INEC, there have been a lot of uh, question mark on INEC's uh, credibility, and I'm, I'm afraid about confidence going into this election. 93 million is a big number, especially when you think about the political economy of conducting election. Elections are premised on the number of registered voters. If the planning for the election is based on this 93 million, how does that also I mean, impact on the Nigerian economy? This is the election that before now we know Anel was planning with 305 billion. Before you think about inflation and all the attacks that have happened against INEC facility and which we know INEC would definitely come up with some supplementary budget. So if you think about even the cost that is involved in this process, I think that is why I say we need to raise the bar in the, in, uh, in the area of vigilance and even on, on the part of INEC to really come clean in this process. Because because all the pin that fingers have been pointing at INEC. They are the ones that enable this. And so I think it is from them first to clean the mess, but we we'll also help them to clean the mess. Okay, so you believe that INEC should actually uh, have a multi stakeholder audit and integrity test? Yeah, I think the process of the vote register audit at the moment may be too late, but it is also something that INEC should commit to. That immediately, after, that should be at the front for electoral reform discourse immediately after the elections in march we should start talking about cleaning the register i sincerely don't even believe we have 93 million voters on that so register the, are you suggesting that there's nothing anyone can do right now at the moment yes well, so well, we what have, about we have open, more, more than 45 less than 50 but i think more than 45 at the last count and i'm not talking about physical i mentioned to you you can withhold them with an, you can limit access from the server because you have to use the beavers to authenticate. All of these people we are seeing, regardless of the fact that you have a PVC, we can remove you from the back end. And then on the election day, whatever you do, the PVC will not be authenticated. Now, if you say you want to transfer responsibility to the citizens, in urban areas, that is possible. Because they can capture with their mobile devices, they can make reports in real time. They can post it on Twitter, on Facebook. But in the rural areas, where elections are really, really decided, I can tell you this for free. I've been an election observer myself. I've also been a party agent my own self, right? There are places where political parties, especially in opposition strongholds, cannot deploy agents. And with the level of insecurity in Nigeria, there are places where I next staff, if you come, you will sit like this. Whatever the community tells you to do, you do. If they bring in 100 young people, you cannot object because Objecting may be at the risk to life. So you believe that and tackling it from you the tackle device from the source, is the best. Tackle from the source. And we have 45 days. Again, about the believers measuring the number of success and favorites. This is a, even on the morning of the election in Anambra State. 
the Beaver software in some devices were updated that morning because some of them are function and it was updated. So it's now, very, very possible. It is to possible do so. to do a slight software upgrade on these systems that will track the number of completed and number of successful registrations. So that at the end of the election, we subject those numbers to critical analysis to see that it's a fairly consistent high rejection or acceptance rate. This is where we also wrap up Road to 2023. Today we'd like to thank uh, Chima Christian of the Diasporan for Good Governance Group. Thank you for coming on the program. And we do hope that the authorities have watched, they have heard, and they will attend to the issues that you raised today. And also, Paul James, Program Manager Election, Yaga Africa. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you. And you should go and get some good rest. You've been traveling for a long time, and uh, you're Thank still you. suffering from jet lag. But thanks for honoring our invitation. Thank you. <laughs> and this is it. My name is Uju AJ. Don't forget to join us on Monday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon for another edition. Thanks for staying with us.